The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! This is Mick Shot streaming live on DallasCowboys.com and the official Dallas Cowboys app. Now, here are Bill Jones, Savannah Hugh Moeller, Everson Walls, and Mickey Spagnola. Did I have a request last yes, night? Yes, you did, sir. Did I have a request last night? <laughs> you would demand it. It was did a Everson, demand. Did Everson echo my request last night? It was a he demand. Sure did. It was a demand. Does Producer Supreme not look at the group text? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm going to run this song. Now, boy, it's the golden year of the season. This is a special yeah. circumstance. It is a special circumstance. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It was Victory Monday. Man, we needed that victory. We saw this brand of Seahawks. <laughs> no, no. It was a Dallas kid who did it for his hometown team, Jackson Smith in Jigba. Yes. The former Landry Award winner mm-hmm. from Rockwall High School with a 29-yard catch with 28 seconds left. And that put Buffalo in our rearview mirror. Yes, and, you we guys, know. <laughs> and you guys have buried the lead because we should have ran the University of Missouri fight song. Uh-oh. Wow. Drew Locke. Oh, Drew Locke. Hey, not bad. No, 92 good stuff. yards. Good stuff. 92 yard drive he had in a best. minute 24. He saved his best passes for that drive. That's right. That was amazing. Five of 10. 29 it? yard touchdown pass. That was crazy. He ain't from Dallas, is he? He's from Kansas City. He's not, oh, well, well no, it was the, the Dallas kid the Dallas who did it for yeah. his University. hometown team. <laughs> University of Missouri. JSN. There you go. That's another Missouri quarterback mm-hmm. starring in the NFL. And here we are, back in first place in the wow, NFC that's East. Crazy. A lot of people eating words today. I'm sure, I'm sure, but they're they're they're, they're eating it quietly. They should have just yeah. said, "Well, see, you should kick yourself in the butt because if you won, yeah. you'd be in their first place yeah, and we, by we, record we can, in the driver's seat." We can't, we can't seat talk too much, but neither have, can they. You'd have destiny in your own hands if wow, you would have right. taken care of business. And the other thing is, is you know, Philadelphia's having trouble getting quality wins on the road. Mm-hmm. They can't win on the road. Three of three, <laughs> what, three? Is that three? Three of their four losses three on four. the road. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now they've lost three straight games. I've got my Kelly Green on today. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, you got Kelly Green on, but we can't play the Missouri fight song. That's Come right. On. That's not fair, and bro. I didn't know they had a fight got Green song. on, too. <laughs> <laughs> what, how does Missouri Missouri fights on go. Oh, you better learn because they're the oh, ninth ranked team trash. in the nation. Talk and trash, in the Bowl. How does the song talk go? Trash, what, how does the In fact, I, I, I voiced a promo. I get, wait a second. I, wait. I voiced a promo yesterday for, the, uh, Cotton for the Cotton Bowl, and it said that the Missouri band's playing at 440 on game day mm, outside right. the plaza and the Ohio State band. And it, as I'm reading it, I'm going, I don't even know what the Missouri fight song is. <laughs> you know why? You because we now. have more words than two. <laughs> <laughs> boomer and boomer, sooner. Boomer, sooner, boomer, sooner. Boomer, sooner, boomer, sooner. Is that sooner. all y'all said? That's all they could come wow, up that's with. That's all you said? That's all we need to say. I never knew that that was yeah. all they said. Oh, no, I can tell you I the bet Grambling's got more words. Yeah, we, I always sounds like, oh, Christmas tree. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Christmas boomer tree. Soon. I'm yeah. trying to remember the rest of the words. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's only... Only two. They rock got- oma, rock oma, rock oma. Okay, you. There it is. Wow. I don't even know what that was. And uh, Savannah, yes. where were you when Jackson Smith and Jigba? That will forever be known as the Jackson Smith and Jigba <laughs> game last See, night. See, now that's a good thing. There, there you yeah. go. Oh, yeah. I have a great story here. Yeah, where were you? Last night, I was at the Dallas Stars game. So was I. The Seattle- were you there? Yes. Oh, you, you didn't let me know. Mm-hmm. Yes, I forgot about it. I, I would have put you on the a, Jumbotron, a rush. No, that's, I don't need that. I don't need to get boobs. <laughs> Can you imagine the boobs? Spags be like eating some food. <laughs> so, so uh, naturally, after the game is over, Stars won in overtime last night, by the way. I have to go up to the very top of the parking garage where my car is parked, and it takes about 
25 to 30 minutes. Been there, They're done sitting that before. there parking. It's in one of the garages. You're parked waiting for all the cars to just circle out of there. So I'm watching the I fourth think I was quarter. In there too. I've been there. Yeah. Mm. Fourth quarter of this game on my phone in my car. Cars in park in a line just <laughs> waiting. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs uh, when, he makes when that they catch. score the touchdown. Did you honk your horn? <laughs> I didn't, but I'm screaming in the car and I'm like, I'm sure there's people looking at me right now. Like, this girl, what is she doing in her car? Yeah. yeah just, that's what that's when you got the Drew Lock. Uh, unbelievable, right? Is that when you? That's that when out? I texted it. Oh, to you guys. okay. Yeah. Yes. Right. So I only go. had to wait five minutes for the train. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I've been to that that parking lot. It's stupid. Well, right. the the employees, it's the employee parkings on the top level. Yes. So when Somebody I go, gave me a hookup on the pa- on the parking pass, and I was stuck in there trying mm-hmm. to get out. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it takes a little bit. The traffic if you, flow. If you got enough money. Um, like if you're doing a live shot at 6:30, hand a guy a ten or twenty dollars, and he'll give you a parking spot ah, down there that. on the now lower you just got level. Oh, Bill right, just got Bill. Some, Mickey's Bill making just, a note Bill over here. Bill just got somebody that. fired. <laughs> <laughs> Bill just got someone fired at the parking lot. No, the header for the show is going to be <laughs> Go Mizzou. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in a great position. I was at my sister's house. We were celebrating the annual Christmas dinner at her house. And her best friend is a Philly fan. Mm. And he had his whole family over there. And boy, you let him have it? So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so much fun. I tweeted out, I told him what I was going to tweet out before I tweet, as I tweeted it. It was too much fun. So, Mickey, you were at the Stars game, and so you may not have seen one of the critical calls or plays in that Eagles-Seahawks game. Was it in the first half or the second half? It was in the first half. I probably didn't see that. I saw the entire second half. uh, We might have gotten to the bottom of this tush-push a little Mm -hmm, bit. mm -hmm. Oh, they came very close to jumping over the top and horse-collaring him. There's another little trick to the tush push we discovered last night with well, Jason Matt Kelsey. Said that. Does. You said that. No, what did, did you see the penalty they I called did on not. him? I did. Called not. a false start on Jason Kelsey. Okay, uh, and he's been doing that. Lately. Well, there hasn't been. There wasn't. It did not appear that he bobbed his head. Apparently, a, a memo went out to all the teams that they were going to crack down on offsides, Kadarius Tony, uh, and on head bobs by the center, whatever. Okay. All right, so Eagles are down on the goal line, five yard line, or or they're on the. Yeah, it was a it was a fourth and one at the five yard line, so they get in position for the tush push. Kelsey comes up to the line of scrimmage, and his feet are like within a couple of inches of the ball. Okay, he grabs the ball and he reaches it out like another half yard downfield. And the uh, the uh, line judge did not call a false start at that point. It, were, it was another second or so before mm-hmm. he whistles a like it was a head bob foul. Mm-hmm. They went back and looked at it. It didn't look like a head bob. And the official that was in the booth on the ESPN broadcast, after they went co- to commercial, said, here's what he did on that. He moved the ball forward like a half yard. I saw it on the replay as they were going to commercial. I said, wait a second. He just moved the ball forward a half yard. And so anyway, the official in the booth said that's why they called the penalty. I'm not I'm not sure that's why they called it. Right. Because of the delay between when the official made the call, whistled it, and um, but anyway, I went back and looked on an, on that earlier on the drive they did a tush push earlier and Kelsey did not do that. But I mean it was a would have been a decided advantage mm-hmm. uh, on that at that play been run. Could be a little something that they're doing on that. Jump over the top like Bobby Wagner did horse collar. It's just you got, he came once, close. Once you get on the top, you got to get some leverage on you. Put you your feet grab. on the ground. No, you have to get your feet on the ground and grab because well, otherwise you're just riding late. the wave. Yeah, yeah. you know. can grab him all There's you want, but you're just riding the wave. You're just you're just holding on to his. Well, horse. they finally called the left tackle for a false start. I what little I watched in the first half, he was false starting the whole time, and they finally called. Not on it the on tush push, but no on, on regular, regular play. plays. And and this violent stab with the arm to let the quarter the center know it's time to snap it. It's one thing to do this, but they do this, mm-hmm. and it's like, why is that a, not a false start? I don't get it. But they, they did come with another play. 
which I thought they should. They have did. Saved. They handed it off. They should have saved that. I would never have shown that before the playoffs. Mm. But see, you made them hand off, and you made them block it, right? Mm-hmm. The, the the other thing, nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. Um, low man wins on that, right? On the tush push, All supposedly. The time. All the time. Why don't you just lay down? <laughs> well, <laughs> get your you got to be a low player. man with push, with I'm leverage. Biggest player. I'm not just lay down and they just run over you. You got to. <laughs> he ought to lay sideways. <laughs> get, get under him. Get your biggest player on the team, biggest fattest player, and lay him down. Get two right of them and then put them two on of them. Of each yeah, other. so that they can't go under. They no, got to go oh over. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Great idea. Who's going to lay back for can that? Come in and spear them. <laughs> But no, that was a that was a great game to watch. I, I love the competitive spirit of Locke. And, you know, it just lets you know how good our offense can be. Because we put almost what, what did we put forty on them? Thirty three. Thirty three. And that was on know, Philly, yeah. Yeah, Philly. yeah. On Philly. Yeah. yeah. That just lets you know just how good this and offense can be. And put forty one on Seattle. On yeah. Seattle. Yeah. So would you rather, as you look ahead to the playoffs, would you rather play on the road against the NFC South champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers or New Orleans Saints in the first round, the wild card round of the playoffs, or would you rather play at home against the Seattle Seahawks? I don't want nothing to do with the Seahawks. I I, I, I I'm always for playing at home. Yeah. That's, I mean, because that's where we're, we're strong. And you just had a game against Seattle, which was a – very tight game. Donnie Brook. Mm-hmm. We came back in the game. That's however, right. but I New like Orleans. I like the road, baby. No, New Orleans Tampa. and Tampa have nothing in common with the Cowboys, who they lost three of their four road games. Right, to. right. It's more like playing Carolina. And just look at the Eagles, mm-hmm. right? Oh, they won all these games. Oh, you went on the road and you lost. Three straight to teams with winning records. But that's, that's why, you that's know why what? I want to play at home. And they that's were within two plays in the other two games of having lost five straight. Mm-hmm. And that's a very short-sighted view of the playoffs because it's about what happens after the wild card round and being able to play at home in right. the divisional round exactly. is what you, where you want to be, which is exactly. why you want to win this division. And right now... The only thing that separates these two teams, our way it will look going forward, is the fifth playoff tiebreaker, strength of victory, Mm -hmm. because they are way ahead of the Cowboys on strength of victory. I figured out they've got. Okay, explain the. uh, Okay, it's head to head, head to head, even, Mm -hmm. even division, division record if both went out. They're even. They're even. Uh, NFC, uh, not NFC, common opponents. They're, they will be even. Okay. And then NFC so record. So you don't get cost even. on the Arizona game on the common opponents. No, cause because they get caught. They get caught on the, the Jets. The Jets. Yeah. So and, and on the common opponents, basically for everyone, it, it's basically are 14 games that every team has common opponents with the same team in your division, right. which is the games against your that? division. Right now, the they're, Cowboys. They're even. The Cowboys at on common opponents are eight and four with two games left. They're seven and four with three games left. So it, it's going to be even if they went out, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But the common opponents for every team in the league, it's the teams in your division, teams against whatever other conference division you played against, in this case for the Cowboys and the Eagles, it's the NFC West and it's the AFC East game. So it's just three games that aren't common opponents on everybody's So the fifth schedule. tiebreaker would be strength of victory. They've got four wins against seven and seven teams right now. Mm-hmm. They've got two wins against – Ten and four teams, and then a win against nine and five and eight and six. The Cowboys only have two wins against seven and seven teams, and one win against ten and four. Now they got three games left and two against teams with winning record, which would help them out. But I see no way they can and, win and that the one. Eagles last games again two against the Giants and one against Arizona does not help them no. strength of schedule wise, but it's not enough to make up the difference. Right. Yeah. They're gonna lose one. Well, well, the Giants are gonna win one of those games. Tommy DeVito. I was about to say Tommy. And, and you know, it's it's this is a or I only Tyron I only Taylor. base this on what all coaches always fear. And I know you know where I'm going, Spags. 
coaches just don't like playing the same opponent that close that close together uh, people fuss at me all the time they tell me I'm crazy I truly believe when we played against Minnesota 82 maybe three I can't recall um, we were if we would have won that game we would have had to play Minnesota again uh, here at home that was the game that Dorsett went 99 yards. Mm -hmm. Tom Landry, I'm sorry, guys, he was not trying to win that game. <laughs> he was not trying to win that game. Is that why he left game. 10 guys on the yeah, field? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, no, that was on Springs. That was on Springs. <laughs> it, did, it did seem like it, right? But, I, you know, I know this is some taboo subject, but uh, coaches are not happy about trying to play the same team not just two weeks in a row, not even two out of three weeks in a row. And I do believe it's going to come out that the Giants are going to come out with one of these games because of the, prox the close proximity of those two contests. Well, so, if that happens, we will start the show with the Who's Tommy. Mm -hmm. There we go. I like mm -hmm. that. So, but Eagles are at home on Christmas Day against the Giants. Right. And then they play the Giants January 7th in New York. So... Mm -hmm. Ooh, a road game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, road you got to take a bus road ride. Right, right. Hour, <laughs> bus ride. <laughs> Go stay with a relative. In fact, they just got back from Seattle. They just got off the take plane from Seattle, the and that might be the last plane ride they take this year. Oh, because the Arizona because they're, they're, they're playing at Arizona's at home too. So the next oh. two are at home. The next, Giants in Arizona at home, and then they go up the Turnpike to uh, the Meadowlands to play the Giants in the last <laughs> game. And then, I mean, let's say they win the last three, as Mickey has pointed out, they've got the tiebreaker. Then they'd be playing maybe Seattle at home, and their <laughs> season will be over because they can't beat Pete Carroll, right? They have never Did beaten you see Pete that? Carroll. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Oh, and whatever. Yeah, that's crazy. Crazy. Oh, eight, eight, no, right? Seattle. So, yeah, Seattle against mm -hmm. the Eagles. And Hertz was 0-3 going into the game. So that makes Seattle. him 0 and 4 All right, we're just getting started on this edition of Mix Shots on a Victory Tuesday here in the <laughs> SWBC Mortgage Studio when we come back. I'm Dak Prescott, quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys. And they snap it to Prescott, who looks right. It's not there. He escapes left. He'll run for a first down. Just like football, when it comes to crypto, it's important to have a team you can trust. With Blockchain.com, I know I'm in good hands. Since 2011, they've been trusted by millions around the world to buy, sell, and trade cryptocurrency. Prescott's going to run this himself. Run it up the middle, and he scores. Whether you're new to crypto or an active trader, they've got you covered. What are you waiting for? Get started at Blockchain.com. We know that juicy, cheesy, grilled-to-perfection burger sounds amazing, but it does sound like something is missing. Pepsi, baby! The yin to this burger's yang. Burgers and Pepsi go together like, well, like burgers and Pepsi. This perfect blending of flavors makes every bite of lettuce, every sesame seed on the bun, and every sip of that crisp, refreshing, ice-cold cola. A journey to Foodopia. Burgers, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Did you know that responding to one spam call can lead to more? Or that the IRS would never ask for your social security number on the phone? Beat scammers at their own game by subscribing to AARP Fraud Watch Network alerts and texts. At aarp.org slash beatscammerstx, you can sign up to receive information that helps you recognize and avoid the latest scams. That's aarp.org slash beatscammerstx. To mix shots. K Post Roofing and Waterproofing, the official roofer of the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. We need to send that to Buffalo. <laughs> the, roof. the roofing? For the roof. Get a roof. <laughs> <laughs> Still smarting from that trip to Buffalo, huh? Well, just, just ridiculous. But it didn't. At least know. a canopy, even. Yeah, yeah. Or. 
Yeah, at least kind of like uh, Seattle, you cover the fans, if nothing else. Was the press box cold like you talked about? It was cold, as a matter of fact. I had to put. I used. Was to it take only the Cowboys side, side of the press, of the press box? box? No, we were all <laughs> together. Them out. That's Philadelphia. <laughs> um, I actually, I usually take my 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 suit jacket off, and I should have had a sweater because I had to put it back on. wasn't a lot of heat in it. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, Everson, uh, we missed you yesterday, I and you guys so we too. we need to get your take on what happened, what you saw on Sunday. I I missed an opportunity to go with my family to the on the Polar Express and Grapevine on Sunday <laughs> afternoon, which I would have much rather done than sat there and watch what I watched Man. Sunday. But you probably could have joined them after the first quarter. Uh huh. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I texted to you guys that this game was over by second quarter. It was already over. I had already given up on the guys. One thing that we saw was a worst case scenario. Now, I don't know how much the illnesses and all of that have to do with it. You know, Nate Newton always says we have built in excuses around here for when just in case we lose. <laughs> we were worried about the coach going to the hospital. Oh, that's a good excuse for us to lose that game if we would have. And this one is the stomach flu, right? Mm-hmm. Is that true? Is that I mean, was it that bad? The illnesses. The illnesses. The they said like ten players had stomach flu, but right? They played. Yeah, yeah. Well, does that mean well, that they were they were doing Jaylen well? Jalen Hurts was sick too, and he didn't win either. So there you go. Yeah, but he still played okay. <laughs> he played better than we played. I'll put it that way. I guess when you look at this, first of all, I tried to play with a head cold one time, and I I, I found out I am not Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Because I did, I couldn't even finish the damn game. So I don't know how the hell he did his, what he did. But I've had those those that illness during the game could have a lot to do with how they played. I don't know, but I will say this: the problem, the mistakes that we make at home, they don't go on the road against a good team. You can't have the penalties, okay? You can't have the the drop passes or, or you know misplays. You can't have any of that when you're on the road against a team that's running the ball. It's, everything switches now. We were the team that you have to catch up to. And when we're on the road especially, and we're not stopping the run, now we're playing catch up because we never get the ball. And even if we do, it's a lot of pressure on us to make every third down, a lot of pressure to make, make first down count, to make every run and play count. And when it doesn't count, when you don't make that count, all you're looking at is an evening of futility. Because at that point, we couldn't do anything. The game plan didn't work. Confidence was not there. You know, so many things that, that go in your favor when you're at home, it don't work like that on the road. You know, you're not going to get the same breaks. You don't have the same comfort zone that you would have when you're on the road. This team needs to be better at not beating themselves. And that's that's what I saw, besides the fact that we never made one adjustment to the running game. And if we, if we tried to make it, it was fru- futile because it was uh, it, nothing worked from the first quarter to the fourth quarter. 266 yards. Give me the mm-hmm. stats on that. They came up, they said something about that's the f- most yards since what? 2017 or some crap like that? Well, what were they talking about? Against Buffalo or the Cowboy? I don't know. Like they, how many yards they allowed? State gave up. Uh, yeah. Well, was, they gave up 273 in 2018 playoff to the Rams. Okay. Well, what about regular season? Um, I think they went back to 2017, we, we at, man. Well, we looked at it yesterday and it doesn't really count because it was the COVID year and the Cowboys had a bad season, a bad team, bad defense. Mike Nolan uh, Somebody didn't ran have the job for, after. Was it Baltimore? Uh, Cleveland had 300. Oh, no, Cle- Cleveland. That's yeah. right. So I what's our so. excuse for this year? <laughs> There's no pandemic. There's no well, the, <laughs> right. Right. we're just getting asked. It shouldn't have happened in the first place. The excuse was poor tackling. Uh, they couldn't get off their blocks. That's right. Forget the tackling. Right. They couldn't get off of their blocks. And they couldn't protect the edges. Is there anything notable Dan Quinn said yesterday in the press conference asked about the defense? I mean, he kept talking the about the poor tackling. But that's that w- not that. But see, and that was the reason for the loss to Arizona. And they gave up 222 yards. And to me... It, it looked like that they figured out how to attack the Cowboys' defense. And I thought Buffalo did the same thing. I don't know. We do better 
in certain games. But once again, you can't if you don't get off the blocks, then the, the running back can sit back there and pick his spots, which is exactly what they did the entire freaking game. I don't know. Uh, God, somebody used to do that. Uh, Bell from Pittsburgh. Le'Veon State. Bell. Le'Veon Bell. That's mm-hmm. the way he used to run the ball mm-hmm. because his linemen were blocking. He's a great runner, but when you have blocking like that, where you can take your time, pick your spots, yeah, it makes you a better runner. So if you get off the blocks, then he has to make a move before he wants to. We sat back and let them dictate where he was going to run the ball and how long, how far he was going to run it. We turned uh, James Cook into a pro bowler. I mean, we knew it was coming. We all talked about it. We knew that Brady was going to use him more, which is the reason that they have a little bit more success. But dang, you can't. And their offensive line is healthy. Probably probably the only offensive line in the league that that has not missed a start in their offensive line. You brought that up, but so the one stat they threw out was his yards from scrimmage. Mm -hmm. It was the most since 1991. (laughs) Thurman Thomas (laughs) for the Bills Bills running back. For the wow. Bills. Oh, and he's man. a Hall of Famer. You talk about making history, man. We, yeah. we, we made history. Yeah. Forget him. <laughs> we made history. 1991. <laughs> I was still playing, dude. And he only caught two <laughs> passes, by the way. Oh, man. But one for a, a touchdown. touchdown. 42 yards through the air. And see, this is, this is a pattern for us. We're on the road. We can't stop the run. And sometimes even when we're at home, you know, there are certain times when the chains move when they shouldn't move. So here we are. I, I call you called it about the offensive line, you know. You called it about something. I know when I called it, it was all about, uh, you know, can can we stop these guys uh, from uh, continuous drives? Can we stop them from holding onto the ball as long as they did on the road? And we couldn't. And and the deficiency on defense kind of clouded the big deficiency on offense yes because they really only scored three points yeah yeah that right? by the way the yeah. touchdown at the mm-hmm. end was garbage yeah. time yeah. right and uh, they had backups in the game Buffalo yeah mm-hmm. and and they you know everybody was talking about well they kind of ran the ball well no 25 of their 89 yards were on that last drive mm-hmm. running the ball so offensively they got beat up front too mm-hmm. uh, you can't protect Dak uh, and, and, and and that's been a problem, even with the good games that right? we've had. Yes, and, yes. And, and so and there was a lot of times where, you know, he had to make a split decision because he didn't have time, and that's mm-hmm. why all those passes kind of get broken up because he's trying to fit and the no ball. No separation, there. exactly. No separation by our wide receivers, and their DBs are not that good. So either the pressure was causing, you know, us not to have enough time to throw the ball to get them enough time to be open. And, or, you know, sometimes, man, these guys just shut it down on the outside. See, and, and, and the problem is when you're, uh, when you're not able to run the ball against two safeties high, well, then now you've got some problems because mm-hmm. they don't have to compensate they for don't. extra people. They played the same way the entire right? time. Stay back. They just stayed back. And they only got beat once deep. And mm-hmm. he just missed them by, what, a yard yeah. or two? Yeah. Yeah, it was like, well, he's got to hit that. Well, okay, how many times when you throw the ball 50 yards <laughs> right. in the air, put yeah. your completion It's going to be a dime. Yeah. It's going to be a dime. Right. It'd be nice if it was. It was right yeah. there. He yeah. just a little bit more. Yeah. And, by the way, it was with the wind, mm-hmm. too, by the way. And I think they listed the wind before the game. Uh, they didn't. 48? Oh, it was nine miles an hour, but mm-hmm. the gusts were 23. Right. I remember writing that down. But yeah. they wanted the wind instead of the ball to start mm-hmm. the game. Mm-hmm. Should have taken the Which ball. Which doesn't make sense. <laughs> At least McCarthy answered that question right. yesterday. What did he say? He said, he said, yeah, he goes, when I got there, you know, there wasn't very much wind, and then when we were warming up, I noticed the wind, and I thought the wind was more important. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. as it turned out, though, they drove into the wind mm-hmm. and scored. But they ran the football. Yeah, but that was, we, the, our concerns, they all came out. All of our concerns came out in the, in the game. They itself. really did. Yeah. Well, Jerry said on 105.3 The Fan today, uh, when asked about the poor tackling um, against Buffalo, he said the good news is I would say that this is correctable from week to week. We have the talent. We can 
specifically address what beat us in Buffalo for this week's game in Miami. So we just don't make adjustments during the game anymore defensively? That's what I'm, is I'm just asking necessary. Guys. Yeah, we just, come on. I mean, it looked the same from play one to play 60. It just looked exactly the same. And I, that's just not the way you want. When Okay, we made the playoffs. We knew we made the playoffs before the game. Tell me that wasn't the reason for our I don't down. think they and, and see, I was hope I would hope that they tell, would be. Tell, tell me this. If you were playing and there were all these scenarios, mm -hmm. <laughs> the list. Fourteen of them. <laughs> right. They show that it to you. You <laughs> would know what those were before the game. <laughs> right. And with four three. games <laughs> left in the season. Yeah. They're gonna make the they, they knew they were making the playoffs, so whether it was that matter. day or the next I'm was, trying to give them an excuse. It was three I'm scenarios that had to happen to get them in. That is none. They There's didn't none. know. They didn't watching what the scores were. <laughs> There's no way. Somebody said, oh, they had got notifications mm -hmm. on their phone. I guarantee you and they might have gotten notifications. 30, 30 but they, minutes before kickoff, everyone yeah. found out. Yeah. They were, so they were like, oh, in war, okay. they were in warm up. All right, we're good. I'm right? good. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if half the players on the team already thought they were in the playoffs. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, they know they're headed that way. So, uh, yeah, they right, should think right. that way. Yeah, everybody been talking all week. This is this is a playoff game. I thought this mm -hmm. was the playoffs. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they might have known. Should have played it like if a playoff game. They won game. the game. Unfortunately, if they, won they did. The game, they played like that they Rams playoff, playoff game a few yeah. years ago. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just disappointing. I, I want to see a little bit more maturity. That's all. Just more maturity, at least go in. And I watched, you know, we had a chance to watch all the games uh, before that. And you saw some teams that showed a lot of guts in, in certain situations. And we did not show that at all. We went back to status quo. We went back to Arizona. And I know the, the weather's different and all of that. The weather did not make that much of a difference by the time we fell behind. It didn't really start raining till maybe end of the until end it was half. time for us to come back. <laughs> <laughs> it was after it was fourteen nothing. Right. Okay, now it starts raining. As okay. I as I pointed out yesterday, it didn't matter where they played that game, they would have got beaten. Yeah, and the weather had nothing to do yeah. with it. Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Penalty himself, Everson Walls, mm. will sound off on the Cowboys' penalties this week week when we come back here on mm. Mix Shots. The Medal of Honor is our country's highest military award for valor in combat. More than 40 million individuals have served in the armed forces since the Civil War. Fewer than 4,000 have received the Medal of Honor. The National Medal of Honor Museum will be a place to preserve these legacies and inspire America. It's being built right next door to the Dallas Cowboys in Texas. Help us honor our country's greatest heroes. Learn more and get involved at mohmuseum.org. Cowboys football and Miller Lite. What a pairing. Can cracks a kickoff. Tailgates going way past postgame. Sunday night overtimes followed by Monday morning swagger. Brisket in the smoker. Miller Lite in the cooler. America's team playing America's greatest sport. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Dallas Cowboys. Dallas Cowboys football tastes like Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. 2023 Miller Brewing Company, Fort Worth, Texas. Did you know that responding to one spam call can lead to more? Or that the IRS would never ask for your social security number on the phone? Beat scammers at their own game by subscribing to AARP Fraud Watch Network alerts and texts. At aarp.org slash beatscammerstx, you can sign up to receive information that helps you recognize and avoid the latest scams. That's aarp.org slash beatscammerstx. You know that sound anywhere. It's the crisp crunch of that first nacho chip. With its perfect cheese to sour cream ratio sitting atop a layer of delicious beans, it's a sip away from perfection. That's what we're looking for. Add a delicious, refreshing Pepsi and we've achieved absolute nacho nirvana. Because while you can pile those nachos high with every spicy, cheesy, savory topping, there's no topping a cool Pepsi finish. Nachos, better with Pepsi. That's what I like. Back, back to mixed shots. 
The 2024 NFL Pro Bowl games are taking over Orlando, and the roster is up to you. Cast your ballot for the 2024 Pro Bowl games. Vote and send your favorite Cowboys players to compete in the ultimate AFC versus NFC showdown this February. Vote now at DallasCowboys.com slash vote. The uh, teams aren't voting for the Pro Bowl this week, or are they? Cowboys don't want them to vote this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to wait until next week. Should be on the 29th. Uh, that's when the voting, uh, the team, the, the players, team the players vote. Okay, right. so they're they're good this week. So they vote. Uh, with yeah. Fan voting this week. I mean, don't you know that the players, the players they get they're, they're, they come back to work and they've seen two days of the Cowboys getting drilled by the Bills? I'm, I'm not voting for any Cowboy player. They can't, they can't do anything. No matter what you've done all season long. Nope. Um, and Zach Martin didn't even play. Yeah. Uh, uh, Everson. Yes, sir. What do you think of those penalties? I didn't like them. I knew you didn't. I didn't like them at all. It was too, you know, they were all, you know, kind of opportune. The elbow to the chest. And the so, flop. You mean on the... Um, for d Law? Lawrence, when Lawrence they had him on, stopped. On, on Josh. Right. No, was, DeMar, Marcus no, Lawrence. But it was on Josh. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah, it was on Josh. And he's immediately pointing to his face like he hit right, me in the face. Right, right, right. And he didn't get he hit. He did not yeah. get hit in the head. Well, I mean, you know, if you're a referee, then you're supposed to be looking at the place or whatever. He, whatever he fakes, you know, who cares? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I thought that, you know, that was one of the the, the toughest uh, penalties right there because it kept the play going. Third third down it play. It kept it and going, complete dude. pass. It would have been fourth down. They're kicking a the field They're goal. They're kicking the that field goal. That was the goal. first – Possession. The first possession. The first of the game. possession. Yep. And that, it, it started off going downhill from there. Okay. How about yeah. the, since you're a DB, curses hit? I, I don't think that was a, a bad hit at all. I don't. I, I, I saw, you know, Curse trying to, finally trying to make a play, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, let me stop that. Because <laughs> they played well last uh-huh. week. They, yeah. played, they turned everything around last week. But, you know, when you're always when you're always guessing and, and reacting, then things like that are going to happen. You, you just have to anticipate better. You have to anticipate better. I mean, it was and that was second a second and nineteen. 19. It was yeah. an incomplete pass, so they're facing third and nineteen, mm-hmm. and uh, they're well, they might have run twenty yards for first down. <laughs> yeah. But at, at least the odds would have been with you, right? <laughs> and you know, not only did it, it it take the wind out of our sails as fans, it took the wind out of theirs, right? You know, because now you got to. Uh, you know, the mentality now is, you know, now our backs are against the wall. Well, and they, they were start. already down 14-3, to three and they and were en route to 21-3. You're, 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 you're feeling desperate that. now. You're playing desperate. And that was the same possession as the missed fumble recovery. Okay. That, I'm glad you brought that up, yes. Savannah. We talked about this yesterday, Did too. Y'all? It, was, it was just. If I'm a player, if I, if I knock that ball out, yeah. I'm going to go to the coach. And I'm going to say, Coach, I did that. I did that, Coach. Oh, right now. Call, I would call a timeout. Mm-hmm. If I'm the player, I would call a timeout. <laughs> okay? And say, Coach, I, know, yeah. I mean, dude, it's one timeout in the first half. Yeah, it's first half timeout. Yeah, first half timeout. I would have called a timeout because I know that they're waiting to see what's coming upstairs. I know they rush them to the line. I'm calling timeout. Coach, I did that. And yeah. we talked about how Stephon Diggs yesterday was the one signaling. That's when I go, said. Let's go, let's go, I, so they could snap the ball. And get on to the next. Because I didn't really see it when it happened. Okay, I, didn't I, I, I looked I didn't away. See it and but they when I saw Stefan, when I saw those, they had a tight shot of Stefan Diggs lining up, and he is, he is motioning to his coaches, hurry up, hurry up. When I saw that, I said, throw the flag. Just do it. <laughs> see, and the, and it's the, in the first half. And the and. McCarthy was trying to explain it that it happened on their sideline. Yeah, I get and it. it happened. They're looking at Diggs's back, so they don't see what happened. That's in why front. the player, the, the defensive right. player, right. yep. the one that made the play, that knows that what he did. That's why he. And there are a couple the of players involved in it in the Cowboys. Because I mean, Bell, yeah, too. Him Bell out. hit him. Bell hit him. Wilson, Wilson, Wilson recovered it. Wilson punched. And he had the ball. Who punched it? Uh, Bell. If I'm Bell and see he's young, he probably doesn't know. Man, this is this is the time that I need to do something as an individual, mm-hmm. as a leader. Boom, time out, coach. I did that. I made that play. I knocked that ball out. Challenging. You know, it's not like in the NBA where they're always doing this. No, this is a legitimate 
play because I made the play. You know, I don't have to question it. I know that I made that play. 14 to 3 is a lot different than 21 to 3. It is. Mm -hmm. It is. And you're you're getting the ball at midfield basically. Mm -hmm. But it was things like that and then the Sam Williams <laughs> how he Yo missed boy. It, how Yo boy. he missed that <laughs> ball. But I thought um uh, Fossil did a good job of explaining uh, and basically said he, he had sent him some uh, films technique mm -hmm. that when you go to block, you don't go high because the ball's going to go higher. You, you got to go the low. Foot, off the foot. Yeah, right. And he, I think, and he said, and he probably was startled that he was so wide open, right? Because he was up in there. He's like, oh. <laughs> you know? And evidently what happened <laughs> is he was on – from the defensive standpoint, he was on the deep snapper's right, and it said, and he said that when the deep snapper put his head down, he shifted to the left, mm -hmm. and he didn't see that he mm -hmm. shifted, and mm -hmm. that's why he came wide open. Mm -hmm. You know, games like this, and, and as a player, and you guys see it as fans, and, and even being involved in sports as kids, you just there are certain games where you just play differently because you feel different. You don't feel that comfort zone. When you're, in, when you're at AT&T Stadium, the comfort zone is there. The way you react is more natural. When you're away from home and you have this discomfort, you don't have that, that, that sense of, of self, so to speak. You're, you, you know, you're not aware. You're not so self-aware of what's going on. You can't, you know, you don't have the confidence that you're going to make the play. You don't have a positive outlook about the play itself. So when he gets there, if he's in AT&T Stadium, he's going to do exactly what coach taught him to do. So and he's take on the damn edge. thing off he's the foot. He's on edge on the road. It's just different. It's, it's, it's up here. It's so, up here. So to give you an example, uh, when I, we got to the stadium on the early bus, and I go usually all the time, and I go out on the field and check it out. And I was like, oh, artificial turf, this is pretty good. Yeah. Well, the only other person that was out there on the field with me was Brandon Aubrey. And he was walking around, seeing like where the extra point was going to be uh, kicked from, just kind of tapping the ground, seeing what it was like. And then he moved to different spots. And then he was staring straight ahead. And I think what he was looking at is, what am I kicking at? Like, what's the background right. going to mm -hmm. look like? Right. Mm -hmm. And he went through, and then he went to the other side. And he was going through all that uh, routine to familiarize himself uh, with, with the, the surroundings. Yes. Yeah. And I thought, okay, this guy's never kicked in the league, but he's got a pretty good foresight of mm -hmm. things he needs to do. Uh, right. 31 for 31. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, Aubrey. as opposed to that, during that playoff game last year on that lumpy field in Tampa, Brett Maher did the same thing, but I think it spooked him because yeah. he knew, oh, this stuff is not level. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we didn't need him that game. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, but, but it's it's just human nature, guys. You know, it's just like eating in someone else's house. So the bottom line comfortable. for this week is, once again, you get reminded, don't come to long conclusions on one game or one scenario. Because you're sitting there going, okay, that's it. The Cowboys are over. They're a wild card team. Mm -hmm. And then 24 hours later, oh, they're back in first place. Right. You just can't judge in this league. It's week to week, game to game. You can't come to these conclusions all the time. What would you say, Everson, is the, the mentality that they need to have going into this week in preparation for Miami? Especially coming off of what? Urgency, you just said. urgency, just urgency. And I don't mean overreaction, mm -hmm. you know, but just play like you're at home. Play with that same intensity and positivity, though. You know, we're not just going in there urgent saying, man, I hope this works out you know, because we're desperate now. No, just go in with the, the confidence mm -hmm. that you've always had. You're still the same team that beat Philly at home. Just because it's at home, that doesn't – it's not at home. That doesn't mean that you still can't play the same way. They play on grass field just like we play on grass field. If I'm a defensive back and I'm going into Miami, the best thing I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving about this – this grass is going to slow these fools down. <laughs> and I got a chance to think. 
You know, this grass will slow them down. Now, yes, we're going to be slowed down as well. But defensively, I'm not worried about Tyreek Hill or, or Waller running by me as quickly as if it would be on turf. So you have to have more poise on, on regular grass than you have on AstroTurf because AstroTurf is going to speed it up. But now it slows it down in Miami. So here's your up here. Now you have a chance to look at that man, and you, ha you can decipher what he's going to do quicker. So I took a quick look at some stats heading into this Miami game. The Dolphins are number one in points scored. The Cowboys are number two. The Cowboys are number two in point, uh, points per game differential, and Miami's number four. So their stats going into this game with that team are very, very similar. When you look at total offense, the Cowboys are sixth. Uh, Miami is number one, uh, by the way, and number one uh, in passing offense. The Cowboys are sixth. Uh, and they're sixth in passing offense. So we're looking at two teams from a statistical standpoint. They're pretty darn close. C.D. Lamb, Tyree Kill, they're either 1-2 or 2-3 in all the stats in the receiving part of it. So uh, very similar from a statistical standpoint going into this game. We, got, we have to go in with – we just have to go in as the alpha dog. And we don't do that very well on the road. We have to go in as if we're not worried about what they're doing. We're going to do what we do, and we're going to do it well. Whatever they and whatever plays they make on us, we have to be ready to overcome. And they tried to do that in Buffalo. They just didn't do a good job of it. This game is going to move so fast. <laughs> they're going to be up and down this field, at least trying to throw the ball up and down this field. So we need to match their energy and exceed it. Hopefully it doesn't go as fast as that game did Sunday. It was <laughs> only great. two hours and 43 minutes. <laughs> well, the ball's good. the clock's going to stop a lot in this one because they're right. passing the ball a lot. Right. Yeah. You know, and as we wrap it up, the, uh, the Cowboys have been down this road before in 2018. Mm -hmm. That game reminded me of the Indianapolis game, which was, I'm looking it up now, December 16th, 2018, mm -hmm. Cowboys went into that game at Indianapolis riding a five-game win streak. The last three games were at home, and the last game was a win in overtime over Philadelphia at home. Mm -hmm. And then they go to Indianapolis, <clears throat> and they laid the biggest egg. They got beat 23 to nothing and gave up 178 yards rushing to the Colts. And the Colts had a similar record what the Bills have right now. Okay, And they Trying wound up make making it in. And, and the Cowboys bounced back from that game, beat Tampa Bay, beat the Giants the next two weeks, went into the playoffs, beat Seattle, and then they gave up 273 <laughs> yards of rushing to the Rams in the divisional <laughs> round. So, anyway, I was building confidence there. And mm. then uh, oh, let's yeah. try this. At least after the loss, they're not trying to win seven straight now. Because <laughs> winning streaks in the NFL are difficult. Yeah. With the Cowboys losing now, San Francisco's got the longest active winning streak at six. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's difficult. And, and so maybe, okay, we were due. I don't know. So now go on another six-game win streak. That's because, right. You know that where that'll put you uh, in the Super Bowl in Las that'll Vegas. Put you in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Then you did, so you need to win seven in a row. <laughs> you, you kept saying they got to win four in a row to right? get to Philadelphia. I said no, they got to win five in a row. And they well, did. I shortchanged them. <laughs> now they got to win seven in a row. Okay. <laughs> That's oh, the goal. How about just one in one a row? One in a row. Okay. All right. That does it for uh, mixed shots, and we will shout at you again tomorrow at noon. And I'll take my coaching half off. Go Cowboys. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?